I'm delighted to welcome Shota Kakabatsi. He's a postdoctoral fellow at the University Institute of Lisbon. Welcome, Shota. Thank you for taking the time. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Good evening. Well, it certainly looks very, very disheartening uh, what's going on. Uh, already, you know, the, the, the law has been, has been pushed through despite many weeks of protests by the people around the country. Um, this is, so these are not isolated protests and they've been consistent. And already we see uh, oppression by these titushki, I believe they're called, uh, where the, uh, where, where, where the uh, offices of the opposition uh, are located. So what happens next? Uh, I think, uh, indeed, it's very difficult to see or observe the situation which is unfolding in Georgia at the moment. Uh, well, it's very difficult to say where it goes because the protests themselves are very unpredictable. They are very bottom-up organized and it's very self-organized, which also makes it very difficult for the ruling party and for the government to target uh, the leaders of the protests or somehow um, manage to contain the protests because it comes from very bottom up and it's very unpredictable. Uh, so what I expect is going to happen is that protests are going to continue regardless of the summer holidays because we have elections coming up in October, which is less than five months. And uh, this uh, anger, this uh, feeling of protest is not going to disappear anywhere. It's just going to continue. It's going to increase even more. And eventually it's going to culminate in the elections. So that's the trajectory which we see at the moment, unless something unexpected happens. Uh, there's one small also uh, uh, correction or addition to the nice overview of Georgian recent history, which you introduced, is that actually this bill was first time introduced in 2023, which was last year. And back then also like this year, the protest followed and the ruling party was uh, obliged or it had to withdraw the bill and even promised that uh, they would never return back to this bill anymore. And this was celebrated as a victory, especially because young people, what we call Generation Z, was behind this protest like this year and it was a big victory which was celebrated. And that's why protests are bigger this year because people feel betrayed. People feel that the government promised this bill would never be returned and it actually came back. So what happened? Exactly what one. brought it back? Was it the fact that Georgia was given candidate status for the EU in December last year? It's a very difficult year? question why now, and it perplexes many, including me. So my personal guess would be because elections are coming up and the ruling party wanted to make sure that they get a constitutional majority as the result of the elections. Also, we need to mention here that this is the first time Georgia is going to have fully proportional elections in the parliament, which means that it takes away the advantage of the majoritarian districts, which the ruling party always used to have. And this makes this election more competitive, competitive than before. And my guess is that just before the election, in order to make sure that civil society is contained, you know, the criticism is contained, they wanted to introduce this bill so that by the election, most of the civil society is under control. But this plan backfired and they didn't expect such a pressure coming from the West and such pressure coming from the society. So I think uh, that's what we're seeing right now, that they expected or they hoped that uh, they would manage, but uh, they failed big time. Right. Well, um, how likely is it, considering they've already started their bullying tactics uh, with physical violence and so on, how likely is it that Georgia will hold a free and fair election in five months' time? I think a lot will depend on the turnout, because one of the challenges that Georgian democracy has been facing is the lower turnout, lower interests of people in the politics. But this protest, actually, personally at least, I am very optimistic observing this protest, because these people who are angry and who protest, they are going to go to the elections, they're going to vote. And higher turnout makes it less likely uh, that the ruling party will be able to screw or forge the result so that it gets a constitutional majority of majority. So I think a lot will depend on uh, the turnout. Right. And so far, it's very. I'm very optimistic. Again. 
OK, well, that, that's good news. Now, in the last few seconds that we have left, Shota, sure. are there any civil uh, or legal uh, actions that can be taken to reverse this law? Uh, there are two ways. One is which civil society is already considering, that is uh, appealing in a constitutional court and arguing that this law goes and goes against the Constitution. It violates uh, freedom of assembly. It also violates... Uh, we have in the Constitution uh, the article which says that all the state institutions should ensure that Georgia goes towards the European Union and NATO. So if this law contradicts the, this article, this can also be appealed in constitutional court. So that's one way to go. Another way is also to go to the European Court of Human Rights and argue there. So these are two legal ways at the moment which is left, and we'll see how it goes. I know that civil society is already preparing the appeal in the Constitutional Court, and also they're preparing a deal on the European Court of Human Rights. Right, well, we should be watching very closely and we wish them every success. Shota Kakabatsi, thank you very much for joining us this evening. Have thank a good you. Evening. Thank you. Have a good evening.